working with infinite limits. So far, we've figured out how to do it visually, and we've learned how to do it with polynomial functions. In this video, we're going to learn how to do it with rational or fraction functions. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to review the end behavior of rational functions. We did this back in graphing rational functions, and this is going to give us a visual of what our answer is going to be. So this is going to tell us the answer before we actually compute it the official way. All right, we did this by using the face case. We looked at the degrees of the numerator versus the degree of the denominator. We had three different instances of things happening. Um, in the first instance, our numerator degree is less than our denominator degree. That puts us in happy face case because we have absolutely no work to do. That gives us a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. That means, again, we have a horizontal asymptote at zero, and so at the very end of our graph, our graph is going to approach this horizontal asymptote. Now, it might approach it from the top, or it might approach it from the bottom, but it doesn't really matter. It just means the farther out we get, the closer and closer we get to that value. Now, that's the right-hand side of the graph, or as x is approaching infinity, but the same thing really is going to happen on the left. It can approach my horizontal asymptote from the top or the bottom. Doesn't matter because we're going to get closer and closer to this asymptote. So that's as x is approaching negative infinity. So if we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, that means our end behavior or our infinite limits are also going to be the exact same thing as our horizontal asymptote, which is y equals 0. Now, other instances, our middle face case is when the degrees are equal. And what you do is you look at the leading coefficient and divide it over the leading coefficient of the numerator and the denominator. That's also going to give you a horizontal asymptote. And if it's ever going to give you a horizontal asymptote, that's going to give you your infinite limits from both directions. So whatever this reduces down to, that's going to be your infinite limits. Now, in sad face case, of course, our last options, when the numerator degree is greater than the denominator degree, we're going to have an oblique asymptote. And the way that we had to figure out what this oblique asymptote was, was we had to long divide our numerator by the denominator. That gives us an actual equation here, which we have to graph. And that's going to tell us what our graph is going to follow. And then we would eventually have to graph it to see what our end behavior is going to be. So we're going to talk a little bit more about this sad face case, and actually in all cases here in a moment. But this is just to review what we already know at this point. I have an example over here. We are going to look at the end behavior of the right and the end behavior of the left. So let's just use the knowledge that we know. In my numerator, I have a degree 3. In my denominator, I also have a degree 3. That puts me in middle face case. So I just need to look at my leading coefficients to figure out what my horizontal asymptote is. My horizontal asymptote in the correct format is y equals my leading coefficient negative 3 in the numerator and 2 in the denominator. So I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 3 half. If I have a horizontal asymptote there, that means my graph is going to approach that horizontal asymptote from either the top or the bottom on the right-hand side, but it doesn't matter. So that means my limit as x is approaching infinity is negative 3 halves. Same information for part B. I have a horizontal asymptote at y equal negative 3 halves. So that means on the very left-hand side, my graph is going to approach this horizontal asymptote from either the top or the bottom, but it doesn't really matter. It's just going to get closer and closer to it. So my answer here is also going to be negative 3 halves. So getting rid of all of this excess information here, if you're ever in happy or middle face case, 
That means you're going to have a horizontal asymptote, and that means your infinite limits, both positive and negative infinity, are going to be exactly what your horizontal asymptote is. Y equals zero in happy face case, or Y equals your leading coefficients in middle face case, such as this example here. So my answers to both parts of this is negative three half. Now this is how you do it unofficially by remembering what we already know, the end behavior of the graph, but let's figure out the official way. And that's going to help us with our sad face case without actually having to long divide our numerator by our denominator. Before we move into those official steps, there's actually a property that we need to cover first. And it is the limit as x is approaching either positive or negative infinity of something that represents this here, a number or a constant in the numerator divided by x, or my variable, to some power in the denominator. Whenever we have something that resembles this format, our limit is always going to end up in the exact same place. And again, it doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative infinity. To help us figure this out, I'm going to use one of those tables that we used back in finite limits. So this is going to give us an estimation, and then that's going to give us the property that we're going to use here in a second. So let me give you an example of something that resembles this format here. So a number or a constant on top, so like something like 5, and x to some power on the bottom. So let's just do x to the third. So I'm going to use this. This is my function. And I'm going to plug in numbers to see what I'm getting closer and closer and closer to. So here's my table. Now I'm going to start with the top one here as x is approaching positive infinity. So I'm going to start with small numbers. So I'm going to start with my x values here. And I'm going to figure out what my actual limits are going to be here. So the first x value that I'm going to plug in, let's just start with a small number like 1. So 5 divided by 1 to the third power gives me 5 divided by 1, or that gives me 5. So my answer is 5 there. Now let's get a little bit larger of x value. So let's maybe just say 4. So 5 divided by 4 to the third gives me 5 over 64. And I know I usually don't do decimals, but let's go ahead and do this here because I want to see what this is approaching overall. So my decimal approximation here is something like 0.078. So I'm just going to round it to two decimal places, 0.08. So let's get a little bit larger x value. Let's move to something like 10. So that gives me 5 divided by 10 to the third which is 5 over 3, 0, so 5 divided by 1,000. If I do my decimal approximation for this, that gives me 0 0.005. Now let's go something quite a bit larger. How about something like 100 here? So again, this top represents as x is approaching positive infinity. So. 5 divided by 100 to the third power. That's 5 divided by lots of zeros, 1 million. And 5 divided by 1 million gives me 0 0.000005. So I can keep going, but hopefully this is enough information. And of course, if I keep getting larger and larger x values here, we see that this down here is going to keep getting smaller and smaller, or we can see that this answer here is going to get closer and closer to zero. So anytime I have a constant divided by x to some power, and I plug in either positive infinity or negative infinity, this is always going to approach zero. Or we could have used that information just talking about the face case, my degree of my numerator here is in fact zero, it's just a constant term. My degree of the denominator doesn't really matter, it's p in this example, but we're assuming that p is actually a positive integer. So my numerator is less than my denominator.
So happy face case tells me that there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So that tells me the limit of this in this format, constant over x to some power, doesn't matter whether I'm looking at positive infinity or negative infinity, is going to be zero. So we're going to use this to our advantage quite a few times. I'm going to stop this video here, but I'm going to use the information that we know up to this point to figure out the official way to find infinite limits of rational functions, um, especially those oblique asymptotes, our sad face case.